G'day folks, on to day two, nice sunny day. I'm starting to get some of the oil pan bolts loose. Uh, as you can see I've taken the two into one pipe out. Plenty of clearance in here to work. Got me buggered why these have a um, six mil stud on them though. I'm guessing it's to do with an automated assembly process. Because there was nothing attached to them. They didn't do anything. But yes, yeah, it's about six of them. Or four, sorry, I think. Yeah, there's four of them. And they have the long stud on them. And for the most part, oil on the supposedly dry side of the gasket, which is not supposed to be. Um, it's stuck there, but that's the gasket. It's a um, aluminium sheet, punched metal sheet, with uh, rubber on both sides, just a thin bead of it, and it's obviously got, gone bad or gotten squeezed out like that. And it's uh, started leaking. Same with around the bolt holes, most of them are flooded with oil. I've also got to take the harmonic balancer off. We'll do that soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed it comes off. But yeah, it should be alright. Shouldn't be too bad. And yeah, there's that bastard of an alternator. It does spin nicely, it doesn't take forever to coast down, so the brushes are still making contact. And the bearings are silky smooth, so it should be pretty good. If it was spun freely for ages, I'd be worried about the brushes being a bit worn out, but they should be right. That's assuming it's a slip ring type. I've heard there are actually de um, brushless alternators now, but I don't know if the people are just referring to the slip ring sli system as a... Um, it wouldn't be brushless because it, um, it still has to have brushes on the slip ring. So, I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep going. Well, that was a lot less painful than I expected. Uh, rattled straight out. Still a lot of torque involved, but as you can see there's not a lot of bearing area on that washer, so it was fine. Uh, the wheel nuts were certainly never going to come off with a rattle gun. The studs don't look stretched, but who knows. They were bloody tight. That's not too bad. Now it's got to re-tap those holes, clean all the dirt and muck out of them with an 8mm metric tap. Thread that in and pop it out. You can see oil weeps past the shaft key too, they've got sealant in there. I'm going to have to uh, replicate that with the grey max as well, clean everything up and then stick it back on with sealant. Fun, fun. <laughs> this car isn't too hard to work on. Modern cars aren't. you just got to be patient and gentle, use the right tools. Uh, the bolt heads seem to be smaller than a lot of old car older cars, so you do have to be a bit more gentle and use... Uh, six-sided sockets instead of um, spline drive sometimes. Uh, some things you get away with spline drive sockets or spanners but general, generally I try and use six-sided sockets and uh, yeah you just gently persuade them and crack them free. You don't get the rattle gun out and round the head off straight away. That's the worst thing you could do. Rattle guns are for stripping down dead things and doing big jobs like that. That's about it. Oh, let's see if I can get this off. Which is a bit tight. Really tight. working. Yep, it's starting to pull it off. It's just a bug because the engine keeps turning over. It's got to work against compression.
moved a little bit. It's tight. Very tight. Okay, well, the rattle gun had to be deployed, but uh, it uh, came off intact and the rubber and everything's fine. It's still rubber. It hasn't been eaten by power steering fluid or anything. That's just flowed around the outside. Uh, it's actually in really good nick. Cleaned up bearing or seal journal and that's okay. It's not recessed or scored or pitted. Um, yeah. I already tried to pick this out the top with a um, screwdriver. That's a waste of time. You go back to the original method that I should have done. Drive a drywall screw in about two turns. Pair of pliers or cutters or whatever. These are junk, buggered side cutters. Use the uh, crank nose as a reaction member and pull. That's it. That's how you get a uh, lip seal out. See the screws only in one and a half turns at the most. And the seal's, the seal's still pliable, but geez, it's seen better days. The surface wear on it, it's not too bad. It probably wasn't leaking, but I think most of the leak was around the bottom of the crankcase, and a lot of it was also uh, made to look bad by power steering leaks. You get some fresh oil and lube this up, and then. Uh, I'll gently push it in. It's made by an AK. It's at 47.6 by 63.5 and 8.8 millimeters thick. Okay, I've got some Molly Tech assembly lube on it. Oh, don't do that. Find in here. No, don't go crooked. Past it. No, you're not going to go back in that way. It's going to wreck it too. You bastard. <laughs> I don't have to buy another one, especially not on Anzac Day because they're not open. Funny thing is they did have this on the shelf. I just want it flush. There we go. That was a what, scrap acetyl bushing from work. One of the ones they sent from China that was supposed to be made in black, but they were made in white. I've got piles of these and they're really handy because it's hard plastic. Yeah, they work perfectly. Balancer, I might have to heat the center up before I try and tap it on. I don't want to whack the crap out of it on the bloody crankshaft because it'll hammer the um, thrust bearings on the crank. I know they're fairly sturdy, but I hate having to belt things on the motor shafts of any kind. It's just a bad practice. So I'm going to have to get the torch out, heat this center up, and then quickly pop it on there. The crank nose is nice and smooth and clean. The inside bore I've just cleaned up with some scotch bright, and that's fine. So let's see how we go with it. Ah, there we go. I did end up getting the balancer on without video of it, but it took a little while. I had to rattle the darn thing on with the gun. Not the best idea, but it worked. And there's the old gasket. You can sort of see it's, uh, it's seen better days. There's a lot of leakage around the outside, so... I'm even wondering if I can just delete it as long as the oil pickup has enough clearance off the bottom of the pan with that 1 8 inch missing 
Here's a dipstick. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's obviously a baffle in there. Not going to take any of that out. I don't need to. I'm just going to go over with a clean white rag and just clean all the drips and things off. Clean the back of the um, transmission backing plate, which has been mangled probably when they replaced the auto. There's no real other way they would have done that apart from trying to drag the whole lot out the side of the car. Um, yeah. There's a gasket. Yeah, that'll just carefully separate and then I'll, uh, I'll clean it up and just, uh, sealant coat it by the looks of it. Yeah, see, that's separating. I'll see if I can delete this one-eighth inch extra thickness without in interfering with the uh, oil pickup. I'll just have to uh, clean everything up, do the blue tack test, stick a blob of blue tack on here, push the sump up hard and then just see how much clearance there is, like how much it squishes the blue tack. I doubt there'd be an eighth of an inch clearance between it and the bottom of the sump. I doubt it, but you never know. And the sump itself isn't too bad, there's a bit of sludgy stuff but nothing serious. The only metallic debris I saw come out was the uh, remnants of the drain plug thread. <laughs> the one that self-destructed years ago and then was compensated for with a Loctite. Anyway, I'll give everything a good clean. Okay, well the sump is cleaned up and ready to go on. Um, the oil pickup has enough clearance in the bottom to go without the gasket. I've just had to uh, open up the bolt holes that go to the transmission a bit so that I can bring it up that extra 1 8 inch. Uh, shouldn't be a problem at all. I just have to screw the baffle back in and we'll be ready to go. I haven't cleaned the bottom of the block either, so I'm going to do that next, but the sump itself will be ready to go. Give it a clean with some carburetor cleaner, a thin coat of uh, grey max on both sides, and then stick the whole lot together. Job done. All right, we've got oil and everything in there. Everything's sealed up. Let's uh, do a test fire with no manifolds on. Well, no Y pipe. works. <laughs> it works very well. I did have the oil system primed 100% and I just dropped the uh, EFI relay back in and yeah, away we go. But well, the fuel pump relay, I should say. Crank till I had fuel oil pressure, dropped the relay back in and then uh, yeah, the ignition. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good. There's a lot of oil on these exhausts. I'm going to take a bit, bit to burn off. And I'm also running uh, 1030, not 520. 520 is too light, especially for an older engine. 